is rapidly changing and no one is more keenly aware of that, of that than teachers. We have some good teachers. We've had some good teachers, great teachers, principals, etc., in the congregation. And I'm so when I'm painting this this morning with a broad brush, just know that you're not included in that. I just want to tie a couple of things in last week. We said a lady by the name of Lisa Littman referred to the sudden spike in transgender identification as a rapid onset gender dysphoria, unlike the gender dysphoria 0.01% that had been around for 100 years. The rates of these teenage girls, the rate of change from 2017 to now is 4,400%. This increase just goes like that. In fact, it would be much higher than that. In five years, it started slowly, but it has exponentially accelerated, and it continues to do so. We talked about a couple groups. I'll bring them in later to tie it together, but there was a third group we didn't get to talk about last week that are involved in the transgender movement. This group is those who want to totally destroy women's privacy. Most of what I read, most of this group are not transgender themselves. They are activist. An activist is someone who pledges to bring about a certain change, and they have made that very clear. They're energized. They are energized in a way to bring about something that I've often thought about my own energy in relationship to the Lord. And they are determined to bring about a change at all costs. And I'm not exaggerating at all costs. There is a extremely dangerous bill that's now before the Senate, known as HR 5 or the Equality Act. When you hear something today in our culture that talks about equality or some something that has a different spin, you can almost always guarantee it is the opposite of what you think. They said that no, cert, no person should be treated with, every person should be treated with dignity and respect and no one should face discrimination. And I believe that very much. The Equality Act forces will force every American to agree with the government imposed the ideology that they put forth or you will be considered outside the law. The Equality Act demolishes existing civil rights and constitution freedoms, those that were hard fought by Martin Luther King and a ton of other people who brought about a dramatic and positive change to America. This has already passed the House. It will amend, if the Senate approves it, it will amend the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which prohibited any kind of discrimination based on color or race or whatever you did. The real thing at stake is who will be in charge of your children? Parents will have limited choices regarding the education of their children. If they want their daughters to have private dressing rooms or bathrooms or showers, that will no longer be possible. The fine school counseling is now provided for your children. And as a parent, you cannot opt out. They will decide what they need to counsel your children about. 
Hamilton County, Ohio, the judge gave, pre gave custody of a transgender teen to the grandparents to make medical decisions regarding transition. Why? Because the parents did not want their 17-year-old to undergo hormone treatment, but they lost. Many of us grew up in a time in America which we believed if you went to a court that you would get equal treatment under the law. But remember, some of those judges you would go before now are themselves activists. My dad told me some years before he died, he said, son, if you, I hope you never, but if you ever get into something that requires legal counsel, he said, I want you to buy the best that you can get with your money because the time is coming when it will no longer be about right and wrong. And my dad died 40 years ago. But the upside is they may be granted supervised visitation rights. Churches that refuse to agree with this bill will very likely be shut down or they will be sued into oblivion. Remember, the government has endless money and they can make it go on and on, and as they rule, churches do not. And I realize this is against the Constitution, but the Constitution will no longer matter. Studies like we based our studies on from the Book of Romans will no longer be legal. If it passes, it would be impossible, and I'm, I, I, by impossible, I need to clarify, it would be legally impossible to ever distinguish between biological men and women. It would exclude biological males. It would include, it should be include biological males. They'll be part of the girls' teams, whatever they choose. For women's protective spaces, again, locker rooms, <clears throat> shower rooms, the men should, the, these transgender should feel free to go in and anytime that they choose. Now, this is based entirely on the male's self-identification. And I wish we had time to talk about this, but, but you think about this, all right? Women, have made, uh, women and girls have made a lot of strides in our society. They've, they want to get paid the same and other things. I don't think that's right. But it's amazing to me that this is all promoted by male's identification. All that a violent felon has to do is to announce his pronouns, his identity, and he's eligible to go into a women's prison. We have laws like that right here in California now. What's the outcome of such legislation? Hundreds of biological male prisoners already applied to and are in women's prisons. And they seem surprised a little bit in awe when women prisoners become pregnant. So the goal is to abolish spaces for women. They want men, this is very important, to self-identify their way into the privacy of women. It's about identification it's about pronouns, etc. They want to do it, and they want to do it now. That's the energy part of it. They don't want to wait till tomorrow. They don't want to have a second guess. They don't want to have a discussion about it. It must be done now. In fact, a lady in West Virginia introduced legislation last week to make this happen before the government, H.R. 5, reaches its final conclusion. The Bible says, test everything, hold on to the good, Avoid every kind of evil. We usually relate that in terms of holding on to good in the word of God, but anything that's evil, this is evil. James says, get rid of all moral filth 
and the evil that it is so prevalent. I wonder if James was, you know, came into the future. What if he, if he's reading our society, of course, it's the Holy Spirit, and you know I know that, but get rid of the evil that's so prevalent. And humbly accept the word of God planted in you that can save you. I'm looking at saved men and women this morning by the grace of God. The psalmist says, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The tragedy of tragedies is that these people who are so fighting God, Jesus so loved them that he died for them. And to this very day, he wants them to be saved and part of his eternal kingdom. So these three groups are very different. You have the one we talked about last week, the typical gender dysphoria of of little boys who will say, Mama, I think I'm a girl, and usually that passes. You have the adolescence girls who really are part of a contagion. You add to the media like TikTok and other things, and that's one of the reasons it's been able to move at such a pace. And then you have the activists who are using the other two groups against each other to advance their goal in a society that's full of chaos and upheaval. Two of these three kinds of gender dysphoria have nothing to do with it. Adolescent girls caught in a social contagion or activists have nothing to do with the original idea of gender dysphoria, again, in 0.01% of little boys. The one absolute thing they have in common is absolute evil couched and shrouded that is intended to physically and mentally destroy children. So let's shift gears just a moment. Obviously for this to have its final, reach its final conclusion, you have to go through some hormone treatment and some other hormone treatment, but then there needs to be some kind of, of sex surgery. Those of us that are older, <laughs> I, don't, I won't put you in a category, but those of us that are older, we always went to the hospital knowing that the doctors would give us the best, right? I mean, I've, I've known doctors that pulled out stops that was amazing and called colleagues across the country and did things in order to preserve and save a life or make it better. But in the last five years, this has changed. And by the way, it's not by the desire of the majority of physicians. Instead of hospitals pausing and saying, well, how will this gender affirming care affect these kids? They push the pedal to the metal and go by at warp 44 and never ask any questions. <laughs> Why is it being done? Well, you know, it's, they decided to monetize the anguish of children. UCSF is listed and known as one of the best hospitals in the world. Here are their guidelines from their website. As youth are transitioning at ever increasing younger ages, Genital surgery is being performed on a case-by-case -case basis more frequently on minors. Surely when you read that, you think there must be a strong medical science behind what's happening. But later on in the website, it says, in the absence of solid evidence, providers must rely on the expert opinions of innovators and thought leaders in the field. So they're conducting these surgeries based on what, what are thought leaders? Who are the thought leaders? There is no scientific 
information in any way to justify the mutilation of these children. These are children born, created in the image of God. With their whole life ahead of them getting hopefully the opportunity to know this God. And unlike a video game where even my generation got used to pushing the reset button, there's no reset. Romans chapter 1, our text, although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Why is it happening? Vanderbilt, again, supposed to be a great hospital, in a video in 2016 by a doctor, by the way, I've left information where you can go check this out yourself, but she said $40,000 for a top surgery. That's a double mastectomy. This is on healthy young girls. This is not someone with cancer or something else. $40,000 and they get hormone treatments and it's just, it's kind of like an oil well. You ever wanted an oil well in your backyard where you just can make money? Well, this is the way they must keep it going. The top surgery, not a hysterectomy, Vanderbilt has admitted on camera to castrating children as young as 13 years old. And again, they called it they call it gender affirming care. Because the money used to be made, there's no science in it at all. There never was, nor does, does there need to be. Since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, God gave them over to a depraved mind. In a hospital the size of Vanderbilt, surely there must be at least one Dr. Joel there that would not, I mean, he's, he'd have to say, I, I, conscien I conscientiously object to this. Ah, but they thought that through. In the video you can, you can watch in 2018, Ellen Clayton, a doctor, in a lecture before the Vanderbilt uh, doctors explained that what would happen if a doctor should have a conscientious objection. You have to realize that you're doing something to another person and you're not paying. I think it's a real issue. And if you refuse to do something because of your religious conscience, it's not without consequences. If you, want, if you don't want to do this kind of work, don't work at Vanderbilt. So the policy had anticipated that doctors might resist at least some. We subscribe to the Epic Times. You can get it, it comes once a week. This week the headline was billion dollar transgender industry leaves broken families and lives. That's not a $100,000 industry. That's not a million-dollar industry. That's a billion-dollar industry. And you and I know that once money flows in that amount, it's very hard to shut off the tap. But there's more. So at Vanderbilt, so again, if they found doctors that were repugnant about it, they, they might go along half-heartedly. So Vanderbilt in, recruited uh, activists, basically, to bully physicians. Here's another, here's a quote from the video, and again, you can watch it. We provide care training for people that are transitioning. If you're coming for a doctor visit or other healthcare related services, whether you're looking for something as simple as hormone therapy or something completely unrelated, uh, such as a breaking of an arm. We're here to help and support any patients that come through our doors. This transgender program is one of a kind of a nation. 
and other institutions are looking to, to Vanderbilt to expand and replicate programs like ours. So if you step in the door and are uncomfortable that your doctor might not treat you well, we're happy to accompany you on your visit. We're here to, we're here to make sure that the doctor uses the right pronouns and gives you exactly what you ask him for. So the mutilation of gener since the mutilation has been exposed, the governor of Tennessee pretty much went ballistic. Now, maybe you knew this. I, I, we went, some of us went to Six Flags. If you didn't get to go, we're going to try to go again in November. We had a blast down there yesterday. I mean, it was, it was funner than fun. But the young man and I got, kind of got separated from others. I said, let's just sit down here and talk. And he began to ask me questions about it. And I began to share things with him, and he goes, I didn't know this was going on. He's, he's a student in high school. How could you not know this was going on? Anyway, the governor, since that time, has started with the government, state government to bring it to a halt. But all of these websites that I'm talking about, they've taken down. Once they were exposed, I mean, boom, boom, they just flipped the switch like you'd shut off a computer. So I have a paper I'll talk about at the end where you can actually go and witness, the, witness these if you have the desire. Akron's Children's Hospital in Ohio boasts of pubertal suppression, gender-affirming hormones to adolescents. The purpose is to sterilize children before, before they reach puberty. The Galasana Children's Hospital, the University of Rochester, has been offering gender transitional surgeries to eight-year-olds. We're here, quote, we're here and we have a lot to offer. And if you're at the very beginning of this process, if they're just beginning to think about gender, if you have an eight-year-old who's beginning to express these thoughts, give us a call. That was taken down. This week they put it back up and they said this, we provide pubertal suppression gender affirming hormones to older adolescents and young adults. Now I'm not a betting man, but if I were a betting man, I'm bet if you found the right person, you could still get the surgery performed. All of these hospitals, think about them. They're full of physicians. They're full of adults. They're full of thinking people. You'd think they'd step up to protect children from their, their worst impulses or the latest fads or Maybe even their parents' neuroses. But you can't do that because it's a billion dollar industry. San Francisco, Vanderbilt, UCA, Boston's hospitals, hundreds and hundreds of hospitals across America are doing this. Tens of thousands of kids have already gone through this. And some of those who want to get back on YouTube and tell the tragedy of their story, you won't find them there. Because the message only goes one direction. There's no, there's no room for, for, for thousands of kids who say, my life is destroyed. I need to tell someone. Researchers at Stockholm if you know anything about Stockholm, you know that they've been way out there a long time ago. The effects of transgender th surgery over 30 years, this was a result. Persons with transsexualism have after sex reassignment, have consistently higher risk for mortality, that's death. Suicidal behavior leads to death and psychotic morbidity, you can't think straight. That's their conclusion after 30 years. We're really into it full steam ahead at five and they never got to where we are. I mentioned last week about the uh, Tavistock Center in London. It closed down. The final statement they made is that we were pressured into life destroying treatments. That's not allowed on the internet. So 20, 30 years, we may look back at the evil and realize that we're just running headlong into abyss. 
it's like a stampede and running for running for abyss. And, and the ones at the front, they may see it and try to stop, but it's too late. They'll just be shoved right over by the crowd. All right. Even if you look back in shame and horror, whole generation, maybe more, of kids who got caught up into this were told how great it was, will no longer be able to function in society. And as I said last year, 40% of them talk about, 80% uh, of them talk about suicide, 40% actually attempt it. Although they became wise, they became fools. You're watching, we're watching people, we're listening to people who think they're the smartest people that have ever lived at any time. They don't need God. They will scream at you if you mention anything about God. You'll be called all kinds of things that have nothing to do with it. Do with it. The, the, the favorite is to call you a racist, maybe a Nazi. Fools, led by fools, with depraved minds into evil. It happens every time God is ignored. So in 2022, you can sexually mutilate children. You can take them to drag shows. I don't know what it is. I heard a, I heard a mother say this week, she stood before a school board down in San Diego. I'll have a little clip to play about a minute when we're through. But she asked the question, what is it that school boards see about men who are dressed up like women? What is it that makes you want to take our children to their shows? Or when they dress up and grind around on the floor in front of minors, what is it that you see in that? They provide them with books, preschool, kindergarten, talking about things that most of us didn't learn till our late teens. They talk about pornography and junior high, and if you've got a really cool teacher, that teacher will help you circumvent your parents so that you can watch this in private. Thinking they're the smartest people who've ever lived, they decided, but they can't decide if, if someone is a male or a female. Well, can't might not be the word, right word. Maybe they choose not to decide. One would have to be a fool to ignore the words of the creator. He created male and female and we are all created in the image of God. The NEA, which is the largest teachers union in the country, they get 13 million just in teachers dues. It's involved in the sexualization of children. I'm not telling you what I think. You can go to their website. The LGBTIQ Caucus created a website that urges teachers to talk about sex practices with children that are minors. They promise to share resources to empower youth, to teach them about things that I won't even mention and some of them I don't even understand. How is it possible that they're able to do this? If I went out on the street somewhere and talked like that to a child, to a minor, I would be arrested, and rightly so. How is it that they're able to do this, which, by the way, is against the law? Some teachers <clears throat> have a little QR code. Uh, I meant to get a shot of one, but they'll, they'll clip it onto their, their jacket or their shirt or whatever with a safety pin or something. Some of them glue it on. And your kid comes along with his phone and takes a, takes a scan of that. And that lets that kid have access to any resource about anything that he chooses. As a parent, you'll never know. Anyway, three million members. <clears throat> They've taken gender theories from universities and they're now being applied 
to K through 12th grade. All of this without the parents' knowledge and definitely without the parents' consent. The part of the bill of HR 5 is to remove the consent of parents so that you no longer have authority over your children or your children's, your grandchildren. This needs to go from our school system and fast. This is something totally new to the United States of America. It's not surprising that it reached this point because it actually goes back in time to the 90s, 80s, 90s. Some people like Gail Rubin, author of the, the, queer, the Origin of Queer Theory and Thinking Sex, and Michelle Kuko advocated for child sex relationships back in the 80s, and they were pushed away. But they stayed in the university's teaching. There's always been the idea in America that <clears throat> what you do after you're old enough to be of legal age, that's you. The church evil doesn't know any boundaries. The claim that a young child can consent to all of these behaviors is part of the understanding and part of what your children or grandchildren are told. I said last week, you cannot get your ears pierced until you're 18. But you can go to a doctor and they'll put you on gender hormones right away. Not even, your parents don't even need to go. The only explanation, evil beyond evil. You remember when, back when they were pushing coexistence, you know, bumper stickers were around. Uh, that wasn't working fast enough. So they, the new revolution has entered a new stage where liberal tolerance becomes a hindrance to progress. Anyone caught with a coexist sticker is an enemy of the revolution. No time for that. Who's behind it all? Satan. We were getting toward Halloween and this young man and I were sitting on the block just watching people come by and a couple came by dressed in red suit and horns and he said, so is that what Satan looks like? I said, oh, Satan would never so humiliate himself to be seen in such a way. He wants to be seen as the beautiful dressed young man or the beautiful, I mean, it could come in something like whispering something in your ear. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Satan will never appear. I told him that Satan will never appear to you, but there are influences that personify Satan that will affect every part of your life. We had a great discussion. So Satan's behind all evil, church. Everything that's not good for people, for the church of Jesus, for your family, he's there to ruin it. What's the goal? To destroy the family. Because if you destroy the children of the present, What's not possible tomorrow? I want to leave you with this. The entire concept of transgenderism is built on a lie. You cannot change your gender. Regardless of how many surgeries you have, and what things may appear, you are still mostly what you were. Gender isn't even talking about the right word. We should be talking about biological sex. God created us this way, man and woman. And I'm glad he did. Be watchful. Words are being defined. Harm has come to mean anything that doesn't affirm, quote, my lifestyle or my choices. Teaching about God, about man and men and women is called hate speech. Or again, they will always tack on the racist card. I never understood all that. All right, I want to show you a clip, and then I'll make a couple comments, and we're through. This is just about a minute. This is a lady. I jumped in the middle of it because I wanted to be short, but she's addressing a school board down near San Diego. You owe us an answer. No. You know, you don't get to hide by just taking something down off Peachtree and calling it a day. You owe an explanation right. and an apology. Yeah. To yeah. 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 
I love it. We have a culture that has a massive problem with child porn, with sex trafficking. You, a little school district board of adults, made the decision to feature an event to hypersexualize young children. Do you want to know that the word that defines that? It's groomer. You all played the activist yeah. pimp for an aligned oh. surgical center and for a 21 plus gay bar. It makes you groomers and activist pimps. And we won't have those sitting on a school board who oversees the education of our children. You all stepped out of line. You should be ashamed. Yep. There's nothing loving. No. There's nothing. Let's unite and include. Because the logical conclusion of that is you end up in diabolical evil. I'm not suggesting that you have to go before a school board and speak with that passion, but I'm going to probably say if you're a mama and you got cubs, it's really hard to be civil. What was happening is there was a, a, a nightclub with, with drag queens in, in San Francisco and another, cub, another club advocating sexual surgeries, and they were going to come down and hold this for the school, and the school board had approved it, and they, they got caught at it, and they pulled it down, and the parents were saying no. Let me, let me share this with you, and we've got to quit. But in the back, there's a little paper, a one-page paper, and I just typed it, helpful information regarding the trans movement. First thing we need to do is always pray. They can stop your tweets, and they can shut down Facebook, but they can't even come close to shutting down your talking to God. I, I put some scriptures there. I'm not going to read them. I'm going to just go down and say there's three books that I put on there that you can look at. One of them I put out the side where you can find the book because if you try to buy it on Amazon, they'll tell you it doesn't exist. So you have to go, you have to be a, a, a Then there's websites, I said, with speakers and just text. You'll hear some of these people that I said, and it's, it's not poor, it's not grainy, but you'll hear these people actually stand up and tell you what I was telling you. And now that they've been found, it's all gone. But I saw it with my own eyes. Some of it I got. And other people began to download it before they dropped it off the internet. And then there's websites with videos taken down from hospitals and other speakers. What can we do? We need to pray. We still at this point live in a country where we can talk to our congressmen, our senators. We can be informed. We need, to, I had to climb out from under a rock where I was very comfortable. And, and we, can, we can speak to school boards. We can do to other things that still is legal. But mostly we're going to pray to God and we're going to share very kindly why it's wrong. It's just pure evil of the worst kind. If you're here and you're not a Christian, we live in a very crazy world. But the one constant, the one thing that makes us able to face tomorrow, whatever that comes, is Jesus. Because of Jesus, we can face tomorrow if we're in a relationship with him in Christ. If you're not and you don't know what that means, talk to us. We'll tell you what Jesus has done for us. If you need the prayers, you want strength, anything we can do, let us know while we stand and sing. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish way.